So what is the, look, okay, but hold on about that. Let me ask you this. What is the bank doing with your money? Is anyone walking in giving cash to a bank? I mean, they don't have enough room. I've seen it. I don't even see safes anymore. Not that I go in all the time, but if I do pass by, I'm just, I'm thinking about this. Well, let's say you had big bags of money, right? And what are you going to do? You're going to walk in, uh, uh, talk to the guy, the bank man, and, and say what? Take take this and, and, and put it somewhere? Well, exactly. That's that's what I'm trying to say. It's, uh, it doesn't make sense to me. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to keep talking about conditional access, and we're going to focus on the device, right? We're going to talk a little bit about managed versus unmanaged device compliance and why the state of the device you're on matters. No, no, I am. Uh, I don't have a lot of money, but if I did, and I had bags of it, I probably, I don't know if I would take it to a bank. Get Rubik's, solving for the modern workplace. Okay, so yesterday we established that, you know, what conditional access does, why it's important, and how to set up a basic conditional access policy. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to start talking about all the different uh, parameters that affect conditional access and kind of why they matter, right? So today we're actually going to start by talking about the device. So this is the optimal state a device can exist in. It's managed by Intune, it has a compliance policy assigned to it, and it's being marked compliant, right? So this is a device that I would, you know, highly trust uh, relatively in terms of other things. What about a device that's pending compliance? Uh, this is what we have grace periods for. So in this situation, we have another managed device. It has the same compliance policy assigned, but it's not compliant yet, or it's pending evaluation. And even though this should only exist in a small window, we have to account for this because this is, this is a situation that's going to happen when you're managing devices. Okay, so what about a device that's managed, but it's not compliant, right? It has the same compliance policy applied to it, and it's still enrolled at Intune, but for whatever reason, it doesn't meet the criteria. And that could be for several reasons. That could be you're enforcing disk encryption and this did not encrypt for some reason. Uh, you're requiring a minimum OS version and this device hasn't been updated. So you're gonna have devices that are just flat out and not compliant. Okay, and then finally, you're gonna just have unmanaged devices, right? These are PCs that exist that are being used by your end users and they're not managed in Intune. Intune doesn't know about them. They're not registered with anything. And, you know, it's very, it's a very real possibility that end users are going to attempt to get corporate resource access on these devices. So even though we talked about compliance and the different stages, I think it's pretty clear to see before we evaluate compliance, we have to evaluate managed versus unmanaged devices because right regardless of the compliance state here you know I, it still it still makes a difference right where this device uh, fits in so how do we designate between managed and unmanaged devices because we've talked in the we've talked in the past about compliance we know how to set policy and i'm going to walk you through setting basic policy um at some point but you know right at the beginning this is something we need to evaluate so let's take a look so I'm going to go over to Intune and I'm going to go to my devices. Uh, let's look at Windows devices. Uh, that's what I have the most of. And you can see I have a mix of compliant and not compliant. I don't have any in the grace period, which is pending compliance at the moment. Um, how do I designate between a managed and an unmanaged device? Well, you really can't. If it's unmanaged, it's not going to show up in here. That's why it's unmanaged. But we won't really know until a user attempts to take an action on an unmanaged device to access a resource, signing into their email, getting to OneDrive, copying a Word document. So what do we do? So conditional access gives us a way to evaluate these things. So I'm gonna to go to conditional access and we're gonna create a policy. And my policy is going to say, um, block all unmanaged devices. So, as always, I'm going to target this to all users, but I am going to exclude my break glass account. In my case, it's my personal account, but you're going to want to make sure you've gone through the exercise of having a proper break glass account 
And uh, there's tons of good information out there on the right way to do that. So I'm going to exclude myself. So for the purposes of this, I'm going to uh, choose, uh, again, I'm going to choose Office 365. Right, and that's going to grab everything in there. Um, if you do all cloud apps, just remember to exclude uh, things like Intune enrollment. And uh, there's a few others. And we're, we're going to talk about that in the future when we talk about how this impacts autopilot. But for now, I'm going to say Office 365 because that's where the bulk of my resources are. And if you have other apps connected like G Suite or Amazon or Dropbox, you can include those as well. Um, now, my condition is you can see here, I'm only going to choose filter for devices. So I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to say I'm going to include the filter devices in the policy. Sorry, we're going to exclude these devices. If the device ownership equals the company, so if it's corporate owned, or, so we're going to add an expression, or the device com is compliant equals true. So this will give me one or the other. This will give me a device that's enrolled and it's owned by the company or a device that is compliant, right? But it won't, you know, it, basically it's either or, it has to be true. Um, and that, those are excluded from this policy. And my grant is to block access. So I will simply not let anyone in. So how is that gonna work now? Well, I have a device that's enrolled with Luke Skywalker. Let's take a look at the actual device here. System information. And there's my system name, Z0T242. We can go look that up in into Z0T242. All right, there's my device. It's compliant and it has corporate ownership. So it meets both of the either or criteria. So I should have no problem uh, getting in. Let's take a look. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up uh, Outlook. We're also going to open up Teams. And we are also going to open, uh, let's say, OneDrive. OK, and there we go. I'm all synced. So no problem on a corporate owned device. But what if I tried to do this from this device, which is in my lab? Uh, this device is not managed by anything and I am going to open Outlook on it. All right, so I'm gonna to try to sign in as Luke Skywalker at rubixdev.com. Let's go ahead and sign in. Again, this is not a managed PC. Can't access it. I don't meet the criteria, and that's because this device is neither corporate owned or is it compliant. So therefore, it's an unmanaged device. And just to kind of vet this, this should work on any resource. So I'm going to use a, an incognito window in Edge here, and we're going to try to go on to office.com. Same thing, try to be a little sneaky. MFA. And I still can't get in because it doesn't matter if I have MFA, I am not on a compliant device. This is a really important distinction because uh, as important as compliance is, I think there's a level below compliance, which is just this, managed versus unmanaged. And it seems simple, but I see a lot of organizations struggle with it and they do wind up with a fairly large amount of unmanaged devices in the organization. So I think it's important that we uh, you know, figure out a way to establish that and we can see it's right there built into the conditional access filters. Once we can distinguish between manage and unmanage, now we could start determining our criteria for both of those. And compliance is definitely gonna fall under managed. We'll be seeing you.